Unemployment is at 50%. We have a negative 25% GDP. We're headed for the next Great Depression, and I'm gonna do something no other YouTuber I've ever seen has done. It's time for some tough love. Hey you folks, Prepper Princess. For more personal videos of what is going on in my personal life, please visit my Patreon page. Today I am going to give you some tough love. So our comment section for YouTubers is a great way to receive ideas and information. And with every single money-saving tip I give someone, there is always a commenter that says, that doesn't work for me. Well, I'm sick of hearing it. I am really, really sick of it. Here's the deal. I am single. I do not have a second income. I have lived off of one income my entire life. You've got a bunch of trolls out there who say, Prepper Princess, your house was given to you. No, it wasn't. It was an inherited house that I paid off with my own money. How many of you have $40,000 in cash that you could use to pay off a house? None. Almost none. Okay? People say, Prepper Princess, I have kids. I can't work two jobs. That doesn't work for me. Great. Stay broke. That's what's going to happen. You're going to keep being broke the rest of your life unless you change your habits. People ask me, Prepper Princess, I can't live off of 50 or $100 a month for groceries. That doesn't work for me. Great, stay broke. Keep going out to Taco Bell and McDonald's and Round Table Pizza and Fuddruckers. Enjoy your dinner, okay? And continue enjoying to be broke. I am sick to death of hearing this crap. You don't like thrift stores? Great, go to Armani and continue to be broke. Getting a used car does not work for you? Great, keep your brand new Mercedes in your Lexus. Be broke, keep being broke. Do what broke people do and you will continue to be broke. Have looked up my address on Google of where I moved to and say that my house is a complete dump. They're saying you should have spent $250,000 on a bigger, better house. I don't wanna be broke. That's how broke people think. I bought a cheap house and I banked the money. I banked it. I have not touched the money from my house. Do not judge me. You're broke. Because my husband would just kill me if I didn't give him enough food. Well, that's why 70% of Americans are overweight and 30% are obese. That's why you're fat. You eat too much people telling me that I look like a middle-aged, lonely, old hag who lives in a hoarder's house. Well, let me tell you something. I am middle-aged, and guess what? Not everyone has the luxury of growing to old age. Be grateful for it. I'm grateful to be middle-aged. Get over it. I have kids. I can't go without cable. I absolutely have to have the best satellite satellite package and I can't make it from paycheck to paycheck. Great, keep living paycheck to paycheck and keep being broke because your sorry butt cannot get rid of the cable. Is it really that hard to spend time with your children instead of sticking them in front of a box? Now that I've gotten that over with, it's time for some more loving and friendly advice. So um, a lot of people talk to me as if I am a hoarder and I will go ahead and put those uh, ideas to rest. So as you know, I purchased a very cheap fixer upper house. I'm on my last project, which is the fireplace wall. I'm waiting to get paid from YouTube so I can afford to have some masonry work done and the electrical I'm gonna do myself along with the design and paint, but I don't know how to do masonry. Um, for those who called me a hoarder, um, I want you all to know I was in the process of a renovation in my kitchen, which is now almost complete, uh, with the exception of some errors that occurred. But this is my beautiful kitchen and everything is spotless and put away. I'm not a hoarder. As you can see, everything is very well organized. 
Um, I still am waiting. They have to replace the countertop because it has a crack. Some of the doors were put on backwards and I can't put in the sink plumbing until the countertop is replaced. This is the kitchen eating area and my desk where I do most of my work. Okay, as you can see, I'm not a hoarder. And this is my bedroom, which again, as you can see, there I am in the mirror, I'm not a hoarder. Um, for those who think that my ugly thrift store finds are hideous and not worth the money, this was my mother's blanket. Thank you again for reminding me that she passed away. I appreciate that. This is my bathroom, okay? There's obviously no hoarding going on. And if you go into the other space, for those who said, Aren't, don't you feel stupid now that you got rid of all of your preps before you moved? Yeah, I'm real broken up about that. This is the guest room, obviously not hoarded. This is the guest bathroom, not hoarded. In fact, I take great insult when people call me a hoarder because I am a bit of a minimalist and I come from a long line of hoarders and that'll never happen. That'll never happen with me. So everything is very clean, very organized. Um, I do want to talk to you all about what is going on right now. So in the economy, we've got some problems, as you well know. Um, oh, and I also said somebody who, I had a comment from somebody who said, um, I look like I have a lazy eye, you should fix that. And one of my eyes is smaller than the other. So all I can do for you is wear these glasses that I got for Halloween to be Clark Kent. That's all I can do for you. And then it just hides the fact that it just hides it. So that's pretty much the best I can do for you. But um, I do wanna talk to people about some serious, very serious business. Our economy is not going to come back um, anytime soon. And there are a lot of people out there who are hurting very, very badly. And I feel really bad for these people. And I think that a lot of people need to realize that you really, really do have to retrain your brain and you have to do things very differently in order to get out of debt and save money. A lot of people come tax time, um, they go, you know, I'm getting 3,000 bucks back and, and I'm like, hey, that's great, what are you gonna do with it? Pay off some bills. So people are using their income and their money to pay off their debt. If you're debt free, you could have had that $3,000 to do whatever you wanted with it. But so many people live in debt that they don't understand you know, they don't understand what life would be like once you're out of debt. Um, and again, a lot of people told me I should have used all of my money from the sale of the house to buy a bigger house. Well, I had already been saving up my money and I paid for this house in cash. The money from the sale of my house has not been touched. Uh, I haven't done anything with it. But um, if I had not been debt free, I would not be in this financial position. I would not have money in the bank. People, it's, it's really hard to understand. I, I've been debt free for so long and I will admit that I am somewhat out of touch with people who are in debt. I, I have a really hard time understanding how people spend their money. I don't understand what they're spending their money on. I really don't understand. And I'm, I want to know when you guys have money, what, when you say I bought stuff, like what stuff did you buy? There comes a place in a time in life where you've accumulated everything that you will ever need, everything that you own, you've already accumulated enough to meet your needs. And then it seems like when people exceed their needs, that's when they go into debt and just buy stuff. And I don't understand what stuff is. I have, I guess, stuff. I mean, I have uh, necklaces and clothes and, you know, I have some trinkets here and there, but when I spend my money, I spend it on an asset or an investment. Mean, and that's not just like a house or um, something, you know, like that. When I say an investment, like I'll buy a hundred dollar or an $85 solar panel to expand my solar so that it will save me more more costs in electricity 
down the road. So it's an investment for me. I spend 85 bucks on an extra panel and over the course of a couple years it pays for itself and then it goes on and on. When it comes, you know, like, I, I really don't understand what people are buying when they say they buy stuff. You know, I, I, don't, uh, I don't like shopping. Shopping to me is stressful. Um, you know, you're going to a place where you have to park so far away and then you have to herd your way through people and then you get to the front of the store and then cars are trying to run over you to get out and then you finally get in, you can't find what you're looking for, you have to go and wait in line for the opportunity to buy something from a store that doesn't give two poops about you and then you just go home and then you have stuff. And the stuff I don't understand. And people use shopping as a form of entertainment and I used to do that, but it's been so long that I don't remember the emotions that I was feeling. I know that I had really low self-esteem and I think that people might have such low self-esteem and the commercials make you think that if you buy their product, your self-esteem is all, all of a sudden gonna go through the roof and you're gonna find the man or woman of your dreams. Well, that's not the way real life works. You have to have a decent personality in, in order to find somebody. And I think that people should work internally on themselves instead of externally on the stuff. Um, so shopping's never been a thing for me. When it comes to eating out, um, you know, fast food or sit down restaurants, the food makes me sick. Uh, it's just so heavy and I feel like I have a rock in my stomach for three days and it, it messes with my digestion and I, I don't like that. So I cook everything at home. Um, with entertainment, you know, with when I get together with friends, um, we go, my best friend Shelly, you've seen her on the channel before. Uh, we go hiking and biking and we go kayaking and we play football or frisbee or a hacky sack um, or we put on the wetsuits and get some goggles and we go uh, exploring in the water. And, and these things are all either, you know, they have a one-time cost, but they're free. And when people, if I were to have a friend today who said, I'm bored, let's go shopping, I would say no. Like, that's not what I do. I don't go shopping. That's not fun for me. In fact, it's like the opposite of fun. It's horrible. But I surround myself with people who have the same interests as me and the interests are things like that, outdoor activities that are free. Um, I, I understand that people drink coffee and I make my own, my own iced coffee, I make uh, my own hot coffee. Iced coffee is really easy. I use Cafe Bastello and I just uh, make a little espresso thing at night and put it in the fridge and in the morning you just add iced sugar and milk um, and you've got yourself an iced coffee and it's just as good as Starbucks. So why would I go to Starbucks and pay $5 if I can make it for like 10 cents at home? I just, um, I really, you know, and I'm being completely honest with you, I, I feel as though I am out of touch as to what people are spending their money on. I understand that when you first go to college, you have debt and it's like, it's like a rite of passage for turning 18. Like you go to college and you accumulate 20, 50, $80,000 of debt in college and that follows you into your 40s or beyond, which is why I don't agree with student loans. I also don't really agree with college because now 94% of people do not have a job in the field that they studied. So college literally, statistically, is not good for 94% of people. They essentially wasted their money. You know, hundreds of thousands of dollars that follows them for 20 years for something that they're never gonna use. So to me, that's just a complete waste of money. Um, a car. I bought a car when I was 18 because I had to go, I needed a vehicle to go to college. Had I been able to go back and do it all over again, I would have bought a cheap Humpty for 2,000 bucks instead of a $14,000 car, which I hated, by the way. That was the worst car I've ever had, I hated it. With the credit cards, I, you know, credit cards are funny, you can just sort of walk into debt in credit cards if you don't keep on top of it and then it just slaps you in the face. But the thing about credit cards is that you are using your credit cards to spend on stuff. And if you already have, and it's like, 
people are replacing their old stuff with new stuff that they think that they'll like better and it'll make them feel better about themselves, but it never does. It makes them feel worse and it makes them get further in the debt. So help me out here, guys. Put in the comment section what kind of stuff you're buying. I mean, you know, my makeup is dollar store makeup. My shampoo is VO5, it's 87 cents at Walmart or Target. Um, you know, I, I don't understand the stuff. And I think that our culture, our, our economy, our United States of America has changed to where they want you to be in debt and they want you to be enslaved, but you don't have to be. You really, really don't. You don't have to be a slave, a slave to the system, a slave to debt. And once you are debt free, life becomes so much less complicated and so much easier just, you know, going day to day, being in debt and having the stress of that on your shoulders. And then once it's gone, you, it's like you have the ability to live. All right, folks, I apologize for the ramble, but um, I, I am having a really hard time right now understanding what people are spending their money on if I, I don't understand. I really, I'm, I'm lost. Even when I was in my youth and I had my own apartment, I was not in debt and I don't understand um, why people are not willing to go the extra mile to get out of debt, why people are not willing to sacrifice a year, maybe two of their lives so that they can have the entire rest of their lives being debt free. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of you. I'm not afraid of you. Oh. Oh, you're so vicious. You're so vicious. Uh, uh.